Welcome to Simplicity Gospel with Kilian. Today I am teaching on a very important subject in Christendom, which I have titled Bible Simple Truth About Jesus. In other words, who is Jesus? Where did he get his name from? What are the things that belongs to us in Christ Jesus? But before we continue, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we all agree as touching this today. I am praying for utterance that I will speak boldly to your people as your own oracle. Father, I'm praying that you will make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. Father God, I'm praying for the anointing of your spirit. Anointing of the Holy Spirit that will teach us today, guide us today, enlighten us today in the word of God. Dear Spirit of God. I pray that you will open the eyes of understanding of everyone listening, that you will unveil to us that Jesus Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That you will unveil also to us that Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of God. That un until a man or a woman receives Jesus Christ, and make him his or her Lord and Savior, that one will by no means see the kingdom of God. We always purpose to be not only hearers, but also doers of the word of God by the power of the Holy Ghost. Dear Father God, I thank you. I thank you because your word, you have met Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, you made him and he became sin for us. That we become your own righteousness in him. Thank you, Father, because Jesus Christ already took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He took all our sins away. In all of this, I give you all the glory, Father God. And I say, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, I welcome you today to today's teaching. Just like I said earlier at the beginning, the title for today's teaching is Bible Simple Truth About Jesus Christ. So today we're going to learn about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Where did Jesus Christ get his name from? So if you're not a Christian, you know, there are some who... All they hear is Jesus. So they have no clue who Jesus is. and uh, Or they have a limited understanding of who he is. If you are a Christian already, it's a good opportunity to learn more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's what the topic is for today. But before we go ahead and proceed, I want to read you a text. A text from Romans chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 2 all the way to verse 4. The Bible says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer for God to is for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorance of God's righteousness and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end. Of the law for righteousness to everyone who believe. So, what he's talking about here is Paul is talking about ignorance. What ignorance can do. He's talking about you can have a zeal, but without knowledge. So, in Christianity, there are so many things that we Christians we don't know, and the reason we don't know them is because of ignorance, because we have not searched the scriptures. Or because we have been taught wrong. And because of that, we have done so many things wrong. Or we don't get results. The word of God is true. It's the truth. It is alive. It has the message of eternal life. So, And it is capable of delivering all the promises that it promises. So, when we go through ignorance... Or when we approach the word of God through ignorance, it limits the benefits of the word of God to us. So that's why Paul was writing. He says they had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. 
So they, they really want to do it, all right? They have the zeal. It is in their heart. But the problem is that they're going about it through their own religious doctrine, through their own human knowledge, understanding, the things that they came up with. And he says, those that go along that line, there is no result. So you can be a Christian, but with not, with not so much result. That's what the problem is. And the problem, and because of this, so many people are limited to what they can benefit from the word of God. So today, the reason why I read this text is to tell you that uh, if we are limited in our understanding about who Jesus Christ is, uh, then the benefit of, that comes from his name, the power that is in his name, the benefits will be limited from us as well. Jesus Christ says, he says, you err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And he also says, uh, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they that bear witness, testify about me. But you will not come to me that you will have life. So when we are ignorant of the, of the word of God, is no excuse. That is why uh, I want us to, to look at the word of God today out of ignorance. We're going to look at the word of God today for what the word says. So we're going to go to scriptures and see what the word of God says about who Jesus Christ is. Only when we find out who the master is, then can we reap the benefits of uh, who the master is. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So my question is, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Remember that Jesus Christ is the word, the word of God. From the beginning, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, he says there are three that bear records in heaven. He says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So the Word is talking about Jesus Christ here. But remember in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word took flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God took flesh and dwelt among us. That word became Jesus Christ. So I'm giving you the history now, the origin. As we proceed, you will get more information along this line. Now, remember that man, when God created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve committed high treason, which means they disobeyed God. And they fell from the glory of God. That day they died spiritually, which means they were separated. Their spirit, their spirits were separated from God Almighty. Because of this, man needed someone to redeem him. A goel, someone who will come in between. Someone who will pay the price. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the soul that sins, it shall die. So now man needs a redeemer. Someone who will redeem him from his fallen state. That's when Jesus Christ came in. So Father God, in his own infinite mercy, in his own love. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have that eternal life. So God in his own infinite mercy sent Jesus Christ, born of a virgin Mary. He came into this world as a human being. Remember, for you to be qualified to redeem man, you must be a man, but a man without sin. And because Jesus Christ was born of a virgin Mary, the blood of Joseph, the stepfather, was not in him. So the sin that got through every man, to Adam, could not get to him. Remember, we are sinners not because we commit sin, but because we were born that way. When Adam fell, everyone that came after Adam was born in the same state, which means in the same nature of Adam. That's why we are called sinners. So now we need a someone who will come in and now ready man. Be able to you reunite man again with Jesus, with, with the Father God. And that's why Jesus Christ came. 
Is it making sense to you? Remember the Bible says, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the Christ Jesus. So there is one mediator now. Jesus Christ became that mediator. One who stood in the gap, who bridged the gap. One who stood in the space, who bridged the space. And now he is the one who reunited us again with Father God. So he became a free gift. He went to the cross. He died for our sins. And when, the, when, and, and when God accepted his sacrifice, that was the day that every sin, Bible says, he became the propitiation, not only for our own sin. That propitiation means a mercy seat. A mercy seat. Oh, 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 oh. So he, he became the mercy seat, not only for us, but to the whole world. So anyone who believes now that Jesus Christ died in his own place, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God raised him from the dead, and that one will be able to receive that free gift of righteousness. That one will be able to become born again. That one will be able now to become a child of God. So he made it now a free gift. He don't work for it. Just because of Adam sinned, every man sinned. Because Jesus Christ became obedient. Now he brought the gift of righteousness to anyone who will receive it. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So do you, can you see what is going on right now? One man sinned and all sinned. One man became obedient and all became righteous to anyone who will receive it. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now... Looking at the scriptures, let's ask this question. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Some people say he is um, some great prophet. Some say he is more than a man. Some say he is um, the son of uh, Mary, the wife of Joseph. Some say he is an oratorical entity. Remember Jesus Christ at Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, he said, Who do men say I am? And they said, Some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Isaiah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. Now, Jesus made the question to be personal. And he said to them, Who do you, yourself, who do you say that I am? And in Matthew 16, verse 16, Peter, being empowered and got the revelation from the Holy Spirit of God, said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the answer right here. Who is Jesus? Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. What is Christ? Remember, Christ is not his last name. <laughs> Some people would think his first name is Jesus and his last name is Christ. <laughs> no. Christ, the Hebrew word that is Meshach, which means Messiah. The, the Greek word will be Christos, which means um, Savior, which means um, the anointed one. The, the chosen one. So that's what Christ means. It, more like a title. Jesus, which means Savior, the anointed one. The one who has been chosen to deliver. The Redeemer. That's what it means. So Peter answered the question who Jesus Christ is. And now, let us look through the scriptures and see who Jesus Christ himself claims he is. Because let's hear from the mouth of the master himself. See who he claims he is. Because he claims he is somebody. <laughs> so let not gaze and find out who Jesus Christ says he is. We just said what Peter said. 
through the revelation of the Holy Spirit that he is Christ, the son of the living God. Now let's hear from the word of the, from the mouth of the master himself. In John, John chapter 4, verse 14, Jesus Christ says that he is the living water. He was talking to the Samaritan woman at the well of uh, Jacob. He says, But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, he said, shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of, oh, water springing up unto everlasting life. Did you hear that? He said that whosoever shall drink the water that he shall give, to that one it shall be a well of, of, of water springing unto everlasting life. So he calls himself here the living water. Whosoever drinks will never thirst again. It will become an eternal life to that one. All of these things will point out to salvation. That's where all of these things he claims to be. This is where all of them will point out to. Living water, salvation. You will never thirst again when you take him, when you receive him as your Lord and your Savior. Whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. He will never thirst again. That's what Jesus Christ said. Now, Jesus Christ speaking to the crowd. You know the crowd that wanted to make him king after he fed them with uh, 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 the loaves of bread. He said to them in um, John chapter 6 verse 35. He told them that I'm the bread of life. Now, the same thing I said earlier applies to this one. What does he mean by, I am the bread of life? Whoever eats this bread will never hunger again. You'll never be hungry again if you eat this bread of life. So he's just telling you here that he is the bread that came from above. That he is the word of God. That if you receive him, you will never, never need any more physical bread. That the, 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 the bread that he gives to you will become an everlasting bread, which means eternal life. Will give you life after this flesh. That's what Jesus Christ is talking about here. If we go to John chapter 8, verse 12, John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus Christ says, I am the light of the world. That's what he told the, 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 the Jewish leaders. He, 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 he told them he is the light of the world. John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus spoke. Jesus said again unto them. Excuse me. He's saying, I am the light of the world. He says, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. These are the things Jesus Christ said he is. He, 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 he is still all of these things today. Because he never changed. And he will never change. Now, in John chapter 11 verse 25. John chapter 11 verse 25. Jesus Christ was speaking to Martha, the sister of Mary and Lazarus. After the death of, uh, of Lazarus, you know, when Jesus Christ raised Lazarus back from the dead. He told, Lazarus, he told Martha that I am the resurrection and life. In John chapter 11 verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that, he says, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he Live. I am the resurrection and the life. Even though your physical flesh, even though your body dies now, he says that will come a day when the trumpet will sound and that will raise that body again from the dead. I will glorify that body and I will reunite that body with the spirit 
and they will have everlasting life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying here. Now, these are all the things that Jesus Christ says he is. These are only few of them because of the time we have for today's program. So I don't have a lot of time to go through all the things that Jesus Christ is, but just to give you a few of them. Now, the next question is, how did Jesus Christ get his name? How did he get his name? Remember, the name of Jesus Christ, there is a difference in his own name. So many people go by that name, Jesus or Jesus. Yeah. But when you call that their own name, when you call these other ones, these other Jesus, these other ones that go by Jesus, if you call their names, would there be any power released? Would there be any change? Would there be any difference? Would anything happen at all? What makes the name of Jesus Christ different from other names? Why is his name so powerful in heaven and earth and under the earth? The Bible tells us. So we're going to go through the scriptures now. Because once you understand how he got his name, you will have more confidence and boldness to use the name of Jesus if you're a Christian. Remember the name of Jesus will work only for a Christian who believes in Jesus. Remember the seven sons of Sivas in the Bible. They said, we adjure you by the name of Jesus, which Paul uses to come out of this man. They, they, they called the name of Jesus, but did anything happen? No, the Bible tells us that the, the, the men who were possessed of the demonic activity, who, who, who were possessed of the demons, got hold of them, beat them up and tore up their clothes. Because they had no relationship with Jesus Christ. All they knew was that name. They had about that name. They want to try the name and see if it works or not. So that's why I say the name, that's why I say the name of Jesus Christ belongs to only Christians, those who believe. If you're not a Christian, it's not gonna work for you. You're gonna be born again first to be connected with that name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, now how did he get his name? I'm going to give you three ways, three reasons how he got his name. Number one, he got his name by inheritance. Inheritance. He inherited his name from his own father. And we can see this in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So through inheritance from the Father, Jesus Christ got his own name. The name that is above all names was given to him as an inheritance from the Father Almighty. That is why the angels did not inherit that name. Do all, no other people inherit that name? No, it was a reservation, a name that was saved, was kept for Jesus Christ. And when the right time came, he inherited that name from the Father Almighty. One of the ways that he got his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before I continue to give you how he got his name, remember Jesus Christ fulfilled more than 300 prophecies about him. And he's still going to fulfill more in the kingdom age. Now look at the probability of someone fulfilling just a, only five prophecies about him or her. Just five. It's a very high probability. But he fulfilled more than 300 prophecies about him. Tells you right there he is the Messiah. He is Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world. The anointed one. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one. If you go to different other religions, he is the only one that if you go to where he was buried, he could not find his body. The only one that was resurrected by the Spirit of God. He is the only one. If you go to the leaders of other religions, they can point to you where they, 
they bury them. And if you go dig, you probably find the bones and they are the remaining, there are remains in there. But Jesus Christ, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only one who rose from the dead. Are you hearing me? Now let me give you the second reason how he got his name. Second reason. He got it by conquest. So conquest, we can see this in Colossians 2.15. The Bible says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them. Openly, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Having spoiled principalities and powers. Jesus went into the place of hell. At the territory of Satan and all his emissaries. Spoil them. Openly. Everybody who was there could see the battle. He spoiled them openly. He took the keys of hell and death from Satan. Remember in Hebrews the Bible told us that Satan had the key of death. In his hand. He had it then. But Jesus Christ. After he spoiled the principalities and powers. He stripped them off. Took the keys of hell and death. From him. So he got it by conquest. Now the third reason. How he got his name. Is by conformity. It was confirmed to him. By the father almighty. And this we can see in. Um, in Hebrews. I'm sorry, in Philippians chapter 2, if we read from verse 9 all the way to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, all the way to 11. And it says, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and has given him a name above all names, that the name of Jesus Christ every knee must bow, of beings or things in heaven, things on the earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Are you hearing that, my friends? Father God has highly exalted him. He gave him the name above all names. That is why the name of Jesus Christ is above all names. That is the name above every name. In heaven, on this earth, and under the earth. That's what the Bible says. So the Father God gave him that title. And that honor, because he humbled himself, and even to death, became obedient unto death. And Father God exalted him and gave him this name that is above all names. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, is Jesus Christ God? Because there are some even religion, they, some religion, they will recognize Jesus Christ. They say, yeah, he's a prophet. Or some uh, uh, nice person, but they deny his deity. They say he's not God. That's that's what they will say. So what does the Bible say? Is Jesus Christ God or not? Is he God or not? The answer is yes. The Bible tells us he is God. If in Psalm one hundred and ten, verse one. Father God himself called him God. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies your footstool. Did you, did you get that construction there? It says, The Father God said to my God, David is writing here. He says, God Almighty says to Jesus Christ, My God. Father God called him God. The Lord said to my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Father God himself recognized Jesus Christ as God. Now, if we take more scriptures, let me I'll give you more scriptures, a few more scriptures here, so you can see why it's written in the Bible. In, um, in the Gospel, in, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Bible says, Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He's talking about Jesus Christ now. He says, He says, Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, 
and upholding all things by the word of his power. He says Jesus Christ is the express image of God. What is the express image? If you've seen, if you've seen this one, means you've seen the other one. This one is manifested in this one here. So, he is the express image of the Heavenly Father. Remember when Jesus Christ was talking to Philip? He told Philip, he says, if you send me in John chapter 14, verse 9, says, if you send me, you send the Father. No difference. We are the same. Philip says, show us the Father. Show us. He wanted to see the Father. He wanted to see what the Father looks like. And Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Now the first one, God called him God. Second one, Jesus calls himself God. Are you hearing me? The Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand, Father God is calling Jesus God. Here Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen the Father, he's calling himself God. Now, more references in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, for verse, verse, chapter 1 verse 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creation. Did you hear that, my friends? He, that is repeated again. The image of the invisible God. We cannot see God with our eyes. But again, God manifested himself in Jesus. So that we can see him. He is invisible. Did you see that? The image of the invisible God. That's who Jesus Christ is. So, if you are not fully convinced, I gave you three scriptures now. And there are so many more. To tell you that Jesus Christ is God himself. God the Son. Because there are trinity. We, we call it trinity, even though it's not in the, in the Bible. But you can see the concepts all over the Bible. Trinity, which means, I gave you the, that concept at the beginning. There are three that bear records in heaven. It says the Father, the Word, which became flesh, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God. So, triune God. Triune God. Three in one. One God with three different personalities, if you want to understand it that way. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is the one that makes you righteous. Someone, may, someone will ask, what do you mean by righteous? What is the definition of for righteousness? Now, righteousness means, I will give it in a very short formula, born again. That's what it means. It means that you are standing in the presence of God as though you never sinned. Without any guilt, any shame, or any condemnation. You have right standing with God. And the only way you can do that is only when you are born again. Otherwise it's impossible in your own effort, works, actions, or merits. Impossible in your own accord. You couldn't do it on your own. So Jesus is the righteousness of all those who believe. Remember the Bible says, For he's made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God made Jesus Christ to become sin. He laid all our iniquities upon him. Even though all of us went astray like a sheep. But Father God laid the iniquities of all my kinds upon Jesus. And he bore the sins of the whole world. Now in an exchange of what he did for us. He gave us his own righteousness. It becomes a free gift. Without righteousness you cannot see God. Let's put it that way. Without the righteousness that comes from God. Without the righteousness that comes from Jesus, you cannot see the kingdom of God. It's as simple as that. So there are two types of righteousness. There is self-righteousness, where people have to do things 
to gain the access to heaven on their own effort, on their own works. That's called self-righteousness. And the Bible says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the presence of God. That kind of righteousness cannot give you, give you access to the kingdom of God. The only righteousness that gives you access to the kingdom of God is a free gift. Which Jesus Christ gives to anyone who will believe in him. Who will receive him as his or her Lord and Savior. Who will confess him as Lord and Savior. Who will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. These are the ones that become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is our own righteousness. Remember Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 14 verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no one comes to the Father but by me. What does he mean? He means that unless you receive this righteousness, which he has offered to you as a free gift, he says you will not see the heaven of God. You will not be, you will not see the kingdom of God. So, he is the only way. You cannot go around it. There is a pluralism, which means, pluralism in religion, which means that um, so many different religions, they believe that all roads lead to heaven. It doesn't matter how you come, as long as you call in the name of oh, God, you will be in heaven. It's called pluralism. But that is not true because Jesus tells you right here now that he's the only way. There are no other ways. No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the one who took our sins. It was placed on him. He went to the cross. He went to hell. God raised him from the dead. He is the only way that link between God and man is the only way that can reconnect that link. Is the only way that your spirit that is dead can be recreated through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is why he is our own righteousness. Oh, Father God, we come not on our own righteousness, but we lay it all to the righteousness which Jesus Christ has given to us. We receive his righteousness by faith. And we give you all the glory who made it possible for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, let me... Um, remember Jesus Christ also said, He said, if you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sin. The same thing I'm talking about. This is from His own words. If you don't believe, He is the one. He said, you will die in your sin. You will be condemned. Hell will be that person's final destination. You don't want to go that route, my friends. Now, who does the name belong to right now? Remember, I gave you scriptures earlier that the name of Jesus, how he obtained his name, God gave him that name. I said earlier, he got it through confinement, through conquest, through inheritance. So God gave him that name. But does that name belong only to Jesus right now as we speak? Does that name belong to him alone right now? The answer is no. The name of Jesus now, oh blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of Jesus now not only belongs to Jesus, but Jesus Christ has given us his name. I'm talking about those who believe, those who are born again, the righteous one. He has given us his name. Somebody will say, how, where do you get that from? I'm going to give you the scriptures. If you go to Matthew chapter 28, if you read verse 18 all the way to verse 19, the Bible says, and Jesus came and spoke to them. He's talking about when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He appeared to his disciples. So when Jesus Christ came and spoke unto them saying, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. 
And he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Jesus Christ came, he appeared to his disciples. He said, Hell, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And the disciples were looking. Yeah, we, we know. We know it belongs to you. That's you got it all. We know, we know. But he did not stop there. He said, Go therefore. That was when he delegated the authority in his name to us. Remember, he spoke about the authority in heaven and earth. He said, All of them with no reservation is given unto me. But he turned around, he delegated that authority to us. He says, Go therefore in that authority in my name and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. This is when he gave that authority, his name to us, to the church. He is the head. We are the body of, the, of, of, of Christ. So now, you got that authority. The name of Jesus Christ now belongs to you as soon as you were born again. If we go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, and if we read all the way to verse 18, remember Jesus Christ says, These signs are full of them that believe in my name, says they will cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. He said, They shall take up serpents, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Did you hear that? He's talking about the authority in his name that he has given unto you and the thing that he will do for you. Now, let's go into details. The thing that the name of Jesus Christ will do for you. Because if you are a Christian, that's why we remember at the beginning, I read the scripture on Romans chapter 10, verse 2, all the way to 4, where Paul was talking about ignorance. He says, he says there be ignorance of God's righteousness. And going about establishing their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So did you hear that? You can be a Christian but you don't understand or you don't know the power in the name of Jesus Christ. What the name stands for. You can be a Christian but you don't know the power what belongs to you in Christ Jesus? Do you know that it's easy for you to be defeated all the time, even though you're a Christian? Because of ignorance. Because you don't know what belongs to you in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to give you now the thing that belongs to you in Christ Jesus. The moment you have that consciousness and you believe, then you will see a shift. Because the name of Jesus belongs to us. To benefit from. Now the first one. We said it earlier. Is eternal life. Righteousness. Whosoever that call upon the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. So it tells us right here. That through the name of Jesus Christ. You can be born again. Without Jesus Christ. You couldn't be born again. It's impossible. The name of Jesus Christ. Is that name. That breaks the power of darkness. That transfers you from the kingdom of darkness. Into the kingdom of the light. Of the glorious son of our of father God. Who is Jesus. Which is Jesus Christ. So through the name of Jesus Christ. We can be born again. We can help others. Become born again. We can populate. The kingdom of God. We can turn many. To righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the name of Jesus Christ, the hidden can come into the kingdom of God. The one who never had the gospel before can hear and believe and be saved through the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? This is the biggest. This is the biggest. The name of Jesus Christ gives eternal life. Is the name that can recreate a dead spirit and bring that spirit to 
He reunited with the Spirit of God. Now, in John, now the, the, the name of Jesus Christ, through the name of Jesus Christ, you have healing in your body. Healing. Remember in Mark 16, 17, 18, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, Jesus Christ said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And at some point, he said, They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The name of Jesus. You can lay hands on someone who is sick and say, In the name of Jesus, be healed. And they will begin, they will begin to amend. The Bible says himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Remember what Jesus Christ took. You don't have to take anymore. He already took your infirmities and he bore your diseases. What he bore for you, why do you want to bear them yourself? In his name is healing. Healing in your physical body. The name of Jesus. It belongs to you. His body was broken for you. So that you will have divine health in your own body. That you will have the ability to command things. When infirmities, sicknesses, symptoms, diseases. Remember them, they're not from God. Bible says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Who went about healing those who were oppressed of the devil? Satan is the one who will inflict sickness and disease on your body. But in the name of Jesus, you can command those symptoms to get out of your body. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of Jesus, you will cast out devils. There are so many Christians now, they are still praying to God to deal with Satan. One time I heard a minister spoke to his congregation. He says, when Satan knock at the door, call Jesus to come and answer the door. Don't say anything to him. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. He's given you his name to cast out the devils. You don't call Jesus again to do it for you. If you don't do it, it's not going to be done. It's as simple as that. He says in James chapter 4, verse 7, Resist the devil, he will flee from you. You resist the devil. He didn't say, call Jesus to come resist the devil for you. In Ephesians, he says, Give no place to the devil. Give no place. You, don't give him any place. He did not say, Call Jesus and make Jesus give Satan no place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because there are so many Christians who are held bondage in this area. Asking God to do what he has already given them power to do. And if you are in that area, it means that so many things will not be done. Why? You got the authority now in the name of Jesus to deal with Satan and all his mysteries. And if you don't do it yourself... It will not be done. That's what the Bible says. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the name of Jesus Christ, we can offer sacrifices of praise to the Father Almighty. Oh, glory, hallelujah. When you stand in the praise, in the place of worship, in the place of praise, oh, giving glory, honor, power, oh, blessing the name of the Lord, Father God, you can do it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can offer your sacrifice of praise. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15, that's what the Bible says. My friends, I have spoken at length today about Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus. The name above all names. The name that belongs to every Christian now. What the name of Jesus Christ means to us. And what we have in the name of Jesus Christ. The thing that belongs to us in the name of Jesus. I have spoken at length today. Brethren, 
Now is the time to get out of ignorance and walk in the light of the glorious word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Friends, if you are listening to this message and you are not yet born again, perhaps you were a member of a church and you are not born again yet. You may not even understand what it means to be born again. Now, to be born again means that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. You believe that God raised him from the dead. He died for your sins. And now you ask him to come into your life and be your Lord and your own Savior. And you begin a new relationship with him. You lay aside your own personal works and efforts. And you depend only on what Jesus Christ did for you to be the thing that will give you, would get you into the kingdom of God. That's what it means to be born again. Remember, there are no other ways. There are no other ways. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Says no one comes to the Father but by me. You cannot go around it. It is, cannot be done by your own personal efforts. You cannot depend on your own personal abilities, the good works that you have done. Now, He is the only way. You got to only depend on the thing that He did for you at the cross, and you receive it by faith, by faith alone. That's what it means that you are now born again. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many, uh, diff- there are so many religions and they say all roads lead to heaven. We call it pluralism in religion. They think uh, they say all roads lead to heaven. It says we call upon the same God, and uh, the only difference is that our manner of approach is different. In our humanistic point of view, that's what so many people claim. But it, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the only way. The Bible says, whosoever denies the Son. The same has not the Father. But whosoever has the Son, he also has the Father. So you cannot say, I don't believe in Jesus. And then you think that you're going to have the Father. No. You must have Jesus Christ before you can get to the Father. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, when you hear his voice, when you hear the word, harden not your heart. Today is a day of salvation. Now is accepted time. Don't prolong it any longer, my friends. Don't say, let me go and get my acts together and then I will come back and I will get born again. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Friends, the time is very short. You could not save yourself. That's why Jesus Christ did everything for you, died at the cross. All he's asking you to do is receive it as a free gift. And he will give you the empowerment to be able to live a better life. You couldn't do it on your own. It is estimated that about 155,000 people die every day in this world. You don't even know when it happens, or when it will happen. The time for you to make your decision where you will go when your spirit leaves your body is one while you are still alive. It becomes too late once your spirit leaves your body. There is a place called hell. The Bible talks about it. You don't want to go that place. It's a place of darkness, a place of torture, a place of absolute absence of God. You don't want to go that route. Now is the opportunity for you to make a decision. 
Remember, David speaking to Jonathan says, There is but a step between me and death. One step only. You can change that statement for yourself today, saying, There is but a step between me and the everlasting life and the kingdom of God. And that step is Jesus Christ. Receiving Jesus Christ today as your Lord and your Savior. So that once you leave this earth, remember, man is a spirit. He is an eternal being who will live forever. The question is, where is he going to spend his eternity? Is he going to be in heaven or is he going to be in hell? It got to be the choice you make right now. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will sup with him. It is a personal decision that you have to make. Your parents could not make that decision for you. Your friends, your siblings, your relatives, they could not. It is a personal thing. A relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A kononia, a oneness. That's the way that you get to the kingdom of God. So, well, as you, if you're hearing this message today, don't let it pass you by again. Make that bold commitment today. Remember, it is a free gift. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1, it says, And he that has no money, come, you, buy and eat. Come and buy and eat. Without money, it's at no cost to anyone. All you got to put in it is your faith. You receive it by faith. That's all you got to do about it. Do not say tomorrow. Don't boast about tomorrow, my friends. For you do not know what tomorrow might bring. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus says, If you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sin. In John chapter 3, verse 30, see, the Bible says, He that believes in the Son has everlasting life. But he that believes not, he says, The wrath of God abides in him. Oh, you don't want to get to the wrath of God. You see, God is very loving. We live in the grace age, the grace period of time. But there comes a time when there will be judgment. And you don't want to face the judgment of God. That is why you, 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 you got to make the decision today to be born again, to be saved, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. So friends, I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. If you would pray this prayer and you mean it with all your heart. If you pray this prayer meaning with all your heart. Today, right now, your spirit will be recreated. You will become born again. You will become the righteousness of God. You will become a Christian. And if you would die, you will not be lost. But you will spend the eternity with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. And you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I'm now born again. I'm now a child of God. And I have eternal life. My sins are washed away. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Father God, I give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Friends, if you pray that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Remember that is another experience subsequent to salvation called the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the endowment, the power of the Holy Ghost for service. And it is evidenced by speaking with other tongues. If you go to my iCarve on YouTube, Simple Truth Gospel with Kyrian, there is a teaching there. I believe the title is Speaking in Tongues Belongs to Every Christian or Every Believer. Get hold of that teaching. It will help you. It will enlighten you. It will teach you what you need to know. How to be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with other tongues. Remember you are now a baby Christian. So I will advise you to find a very good church 
where they teach the word of God. Find a very, buy, get yourself a Bible. Put your nose in the word of God that you may grow. Desire the sincere make of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Remember that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You don't want to be deceived any longer, but you want to grow every day in your faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to use this opportunity to thank all our partners all over the world. Those who are helping us preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and get it across to people at no cost to them. If you want to become a partner to this ministry, one that will help us financially and spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to other people at no cost to them. I will urge you to go to our website www.kuim.org and there is a donation button there where you can securely give or you can write to us using the address that is showing on your screen right now. Friends, it is only those who hear the gospel, the word of God and put them in practice. The doers, they are the ones who get the benefits of the word of God. As always, surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory. Hallelujah. In a fegu musku baste kusko pradeste ala kiendro umbragende as a gez 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 gebes kes kas kabas.